So I decided to break into the diff today. Uh, the only thing I've done so far is I've removed the ring gear. Uh, all these different bolts. They're, they're kind of tough to get off. You really need a vise or a, a 3 8 impact or some air. This uh, quarter inch impact didn't really have the torque to take them off. A little kind of sad about actually. Uh, the ring gear is right here. And then the next thing I did, there's some set screws inside of this thing. You can see the holes here, right there, right there. These are just tiny little set screws that hold the, the plate or the diff together with all the clutches. These are the set screws. You just take them out. Make sure you, you take them out slowly. Don't strip those. I don't know what you do if you strip those, drilling those out. I mean, you probably could, but uh, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start tearing into the diff and uh, start me taking some measurements. Okay, so here's the chunk out or the the clutches out. Uh, all you have to do is after you've taken the top off, just flip it upside down, and you can uh, the whole assembly should just slide right out. They're just keyed in with these little areas here off to the side. As you can see, there there's only four areas of key, and then the centerpiece has a few more. Uh, don't forget at the very end down there at the bottom and at the top right here, there is uh, these, I guess, uh, I, I don't remember the proper name for these. Uh, they're like crush washers, I guess. And then you have a conical washer. And the reason they call this a conical washer, I'll try and show you, is it's got a slight concave to it. You can kind of see it. And this concave is helps to uh, supply some uh, breakaway torque. Uh, to the to the diff so uh, There's measurements in the factory service manual that you need to go through and make sure everything's within tolerance which I'm going to be doing next and uh, I'm not gonna step you through that process. It's it's pretty simple. You just take them, you know, a pair of calipers preferably digital I have a set of Harbor Freight specials uh, and they, they seem within these tolerances you only need to to maybe the tenth uh position so it's anything above that i think you would need some a decent set of calipers but these will be fine for for this guesstimate work so here's everything laid out i've uh i've taken the past probably three hours and just cleaned everything extremely well yours will probably be well depending on where you got it from they might be pretty filthy this one looks like it had some abuse uh, as you can see here are the clutches in the center the crush washer with the conical washers more clutches this is for both sides so each wheel has its own clutch pack these are your your gears that ride you can tell the splines for the axles are right inside and they ride along on the center gear which is four independent gears around a it almost looks like a u joint but it's a i think they call it a dog bone or something i don't remember um these are your this is what you see in the center that ride on these ramps. See those? This is this is considered a two-way differential um, because of the way the ramps are made. I'll show you here. The ramps themselves, as you can see, sit triangle like or with a. Well, I guess it's a diamond, but it's actually just a square. And the ramps, as as torque gets pushed into the rear of the differential, these things split apart. And what splits that apart is this gear right here. And it pushes those ramps just slightly on either end. You can see the wear really closely. You see the shiny part right there? That's where the ramps ride, or that's where the, the gear rides on the ramps. And those ramps, one is D-cell and one is X-cell. Um, and that's how it transfers the power to both wheels. Uh, a, a one, there's all sorts of different diffs from a two-way to a 1.5 to a, a one-way uh, and depending on your application is dependent upon which differential you're going to want to need uh, this is an autocross car so everything that I want uh, I need I need the d-cell as well as the acceleration to be pretty equal or close to uh, next I'm going to take all the measurements uh, or all the the gaps what you do is that you put your micrometer right along the uh, the thickness of all each clutch and there's tolerances there's tolerances with inside the uh, factory service manual usually what I see is most people have to replace these these uh, end washers these crush washers 
they're usually out of tolerance but everything else usually looks pretty good and you can see the wear on some of these you can kind of tell but the back side of them is brand new so what a lot of people do they they just flip them when they reinstall them so i'll be flipping all my clutches so here's the standards and limits for the clutches themselves they call them friction plates and friction discs uh, friction plates uh, are the ones with the inner tabs so these are friction plates friction discs are the ones with the outer tabs so here uh, looks like it's there we go um, all of mine seem to be within limit where the factory service manual says it should be um, the conical washers apparently don't have a limit on them at least from what I've read so far so let's see here thrust washer 1.6 well maybe not my thrust washers are a little under the limit or actually I'm sorry the thrust washers which are these here are standard is 1.6 but the limit is 1.4 both of mine are at 1.5, and they're high 1.5s. I think this diff was babied pretty much its entire life. Uh, it was pretty disgusting, so whoever had it before me didn't do any maintenance on it, but so far everything, all the tolerances seem pretty good. So what I've gone ahead and done is put the diff back together. I didn't shim anything in here, it's just a factory uh, settings. I, there's there's one more measurement too that you need to take with a, a set of large calipers that I don't I don't have access and can't get so what i went ahead and did just now is i busted the 4.110 ring gear off of the seven diff or seven inch uh, well it's a seven inch ring gear on the open diff for the miata um and then i'm going to go ahead and install that now onto the limited slip differential that i just put back together i pretty much just took it apart and cleaned it and uh and then flipped some of the clutches around and we'll see how it feels after this. I'll end up next season is when I'll really, I'll probably go back and switch to this other ring gear, which is a, uh, a 3.9, because I'll, I'll be turbo, and that'll probably be, this 4.1 will probably be a bit too much. Uh, so I'll probably be going back into it, and I'll be reading a little bit more about how to shim, and I'll, I'll probably make a video on how to do that. All right, so I put the diff back into the, I'm sorry, the RX-7 diff back into the 7-inch Miata housing. Um, something that you need to note, and I haven't noticed it on any of the other tutorials on how to build this, is these end caps here. Uh, you will see where people say to mark them to make sure you know which side they came on, but you won't see that people... I, I At least I haven't seen anybody say it, but you need to reuse the caps from the RX-7 and not the Miata. The Miata caps, which are the ones I was reusing, because I assumed it was still a Miata diff, but I, my assumptions were bad. These races kept spinning inside the housings. Like whenever I put them into the caps down here, I'd rotate the, the diff. I can't part now, but... The idea was that these races aren't supposed to spin inside this housing like that. These This is uh, an area that the bearings actually ride, or the rollers ride. So what was happening is that when I was turning the diff, these things were spinning as well, and it was causing these weird binds. I couldn't quite figure it out until I realized that the end caps on these are, you need the FC end caps. Uh, now, as you can see, it rotates just fine. And I have, do you hear that? That's, that's backlash. Before I had zero backlash and binding. One thing that you might have to do as well is this outer race right here, which holds in the, the bearing race, uh, it's it's adjustable. Now, I've marked it. You can see the green nail polish that I used. And you try and make it about even on both sides as far as uh, how many teeth you turn it or move it. Mine are not. Uh, I couldn't get any backlash with them being even, so I have moved them. I don't know if it's going to affect anything. We'll find that out when I review this thing and put it back in the car. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set backlash, um, and hopefully I got to set it at an angle. I don't have anything else besides this vise to rest it on, and I'll tell you I have no teeth in my vise right now either. I'll tell you it's really difficult and heavy, 
and so you really have to balance this thing properly and be careful it's it can be a little dangerous it's slipped off one one or two times and it, it got kind of scary so here's how i ended up setting my backlash uh, i used the vise clamped it in at the lip down here at the bottom uh, pretty as tight as i possibly could um, and then I use the stand on the anvil part of the vise, and I locked in the pinion gear with two clamps like this. It still has a touch of play in it, but that's, that's as tight as I'm going to get it. Um, one of the things that you really need to do when doing this is you need to get it close as far as backlash is prior to torquing down the end caps. Now, once you torque down the end caps, it changes the backlash completely. So, what I ended up doing was torquing down one side. This side actually went down fine without any deflection inside the bearing. This side, on the other hand, was extremely difficult. So, what I do is that I'd take a torque wrench on it a little bit, tighten it down until you start to feel some some binding inside here. Because I'm setting this diff up, diff up extremely tight, and uh, you a little bit of binding back it off a little bit, back out the set uh, race, or I guess it'd be a screw, I'm not sure what you'd call this, uh, back it out a touch, retorque until you get it to where you have hardly any backlash or whatever backlash you want to set it to, and then you then tighten it down and continue until you get the proper torques on each of these bolts. Here's my backlash on this. It's like two thousands. That is an extremely tight backlash. Well, not, I mean, I guess not extreme. I'm sure people will probably do more than this. Possibly, I don't know for sure, but, um, I mean, the factory service manual wants it between uh, 0.0035 and 0 0.0043, so I've got about a thousandth tighter than that. And once it heats up, it's going to get really tight. So we'll see what ends up happening with this. Um, this car is not a daily driver, so I expect some gear wine from this. I expect some all sorts of noises to come from a, uh, a diff that's got this little backlash. So whatever your application is, kind of be weary of what you want to do. And uh, that's how you set backlash. So right here what I'm doing is looking at the pattern that the Prussian Blue is about to make on the ring gear coming in contact with the pinion. Now I'm going to point out right around here you can see the pattern in that area that's the the pattern on the drive gear now that's not a very good pattern but this is a used gear set so you'll you'll get some bad patterns every now and then from that and this one's hopefully gonna hold through we'll just have to wait and see so here's the diff put together and complete uh, what I did was I just set the the diff housing up after I set backlash and put everything in. I set the housing down on the ground and I just lowered the diff chunk into it. I put RTV all around inside of here, and then I've I've since cleaned it off. I bet it's probably inside the diff a bit. So if you do this, make sure you wait about 24 hours. That's it.